And then one day I realized that applied to the question of the origin of information. Uh, and that was the key question that was fascinating me. What, because I asked myself this question, what is the cause now in operation for the production of digital code? What is the cause that we know of that generates, that generates code or information? And soon after that, I came across some, uh, there was something else I was reading. It was a, 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 a little book in, uh, that was an application of information theory or information science to the analysis of DNA. And it was written by a, uh, a pioneer in this field named Henry Quassler. And he made an offhand comment, um, as it happens, on page 16. I re remember vividly the day I came across it. And Quassler said that the creation of new information is habitually associated with conscious activity. Key phrase. Key phrase, because for Lyell, it's our uniform and repeated experience that teaches about, about cause and effect. Mm -hmm. So if something is habitually associated with conscious activity, uh, if information is habitually associated with conscious activity, it, it really fulfills Lyell's dictum that, that what we're looking at is a cause now in operation, a cause that routinely produces the effect in question. In fact, that's the only place we've ever seen it come well, from. Well, that was the next thing, as I, as I began to think this through. I thought, well, you know, whenever we see information and we trace it back to its source, whether we're talking about a computer program or a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book or information embedded in a radio signal, whenever we see information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, to its ultimate cause, we always come to a mind, not a material process, so to conscious and rational activity, just as Quassler said. So I realized that his little, little statement here was absolutely right. And it actually formed the basis of a, it, 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 of a scientific case for intelligent design using the method of Darwin and Lyell. And so in my first book, Signature in the Cell, I developed an argument for intelligent design self-consciously using the method of Darwin and Lyell to show that the origin of the information you needed to build the, the first living cell was best explained by uh, an intelligent agent, by a, a, the activity of a designing uh, intelligence in the history of life. But I think the same reasoning can be applied to explain this mysterious uh, event we call the Cambrian explosion, because as we've been saying, the Cambrian explosion is not just an explosion of new biological form and structure, it's an explosion of information, both genetic information and then this higher level uh, information that we've been calling epigenetic information. In both cases, we know of only one uh, kind of cause that produces information, and that causes intelligence. And insofar as the Cambrian explosion is an information explosion, I think we have another clear uh, uh, example of an event in the history of life that is providing decisive evidence for intelligent design.